Good day, students. Um, on this clip, we're going to go over uh, some examples on limits involving infinity. Um, this could be proved using the sandwich theorem. So let's take a look at number one. Uh, we want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus cosine x divided by x squared. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to do is I want to take a minute and take a look at what how cosine x behaves. Um, cosine x is a periodic function um, that fluctuates between 1 and negative 1 forever. So we have a cosine, let's just make a sketch of the cosine curve. Um, so there goes your x-axis and there goes your y-axis. Um, Cosine has an amplitude of 1, so it goes max 1, mean of negative 1. So basically, it goes like this forever, part of my fourth sketch, but the, the minimum is always negative 1 and the maximum is always 1. So basically, this cosine component we know is always between 1 and negative 1. So let's start by saying that the minimum value of cosine x is 1, and the maximum value of cosine x is, I mean the minimum value of cosine x is negative 1, the maximum value of cosine x is 1. So cosine x is basically in between these two values. Alright, so my goal is I want to construct 1 minus cosine x over x squared using this fact right here. This basic fact that we know about um, the behavior of cosine, cosine x. Okay, so how do I construct that? First of all, I need a negative, so I'll multiply um, the whole equation by negative 1, the inequality, sorry. When I just read negative 1 to everything, I'm going to have 1. Invert the inequality, greater than or equal to negative cosine x. Greater than or equal to negative 1. I can switch the inequalities around. So we're going to have negative 1 less than or equal to x. I mean, less than or equal to negative cosine x. And that's less than or equal to 1. Okay? Now, again, I'm going to add, go ahead and add 1 to all the three sides of the inequality. Add 1, add 1, add 1. So you're going to have, um, here we're going to have 0 is less than or equal to 1 minus cosine x, and that's less than, less than or equal to 2, alright? Now I have the numerator constructed, and I'm going to go ahead and construct and finish it up by combining, the, including the denominator, which I can get by dividing everything by x squared. Okay, divided by x squared, divided by x squared, and divided by x squared. Alright? So I'm going to end up with 0. It's less than or equal to 1 minus cosine x. And that's less, I mean, over x squared. And that's less than or equal to 2 over x squared. Alright? So what I'm going to advance, proceed to do is I'm going to take the limits of all three sides of the inequality and then see what we get as a result of that. Okay? So now what if I take the limit? As x approaches infinity of 0, which is less than or equal to the limit, as x approaches infinity of 1 minus cosine x over x squared, which is less than or equal to uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over x squared. Alright? So if you look at the first one, Regardless of whatever x does, this limit is a constant limit, which is just 0. So we have 0, less than or equal to. This is the original problem we're trying to find limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus cosine x over x squared. This is what we're trying to find. Less than or equal to. On the right side, this is going to be 2 over infinity squared. What is 2 over infinity squared? This is basically 2 over infinity. This is part is 2 over infinity, which is just 0. So this part right here is just 0. So um, we're going to have a scenario where 0 is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus cosine x over x squared. It is less than or equal to 0. So which number is between 0 and 0 is nothing else than 0. So it follows that this this expression is sandwiched between 0 and 0, so it must be 0. So this follows that the limit as x approaches infinity 
of 1 minus cosine x over x squared has to be equal to 0 because it's only 0 that's between um, a 0 and 0. Alright, so there goes your answer. Alright, let's go ahead and try another a similar example to this, number 2. What is the limit as x approaches 0? I'm sorry, limit as x approaches as do negative infinity of sine x over x. Okay? Alright, um, so for this one, we can use the sandwich term to figure this out, but let me derive the answer of this result to you, okay? So first of all, we need to take a look at sine x, okay? Sine x is similar to cosine x in its behavior, only that it starts from the origin and fluctuates um, between 1 and negative 1, so the maximum is 1, the negative is neg the minimum is negative 1. And sine basically just fluctuates between um, the, that value forever, right? The sine function is like a wave that behaves like this, up and down and up and down forever, right? So uh, bottom line is that the minimum value that sine x can attain is negative 1, and the maximum value that sine x can attain is 1, all right? So sine x is between 1 and negative 1. My goal is I want to construct this expression right here, and hopefully I can use this easy whole idea of sandwich to figure it out, figure out what uh, the, the middle expression is, the middle limit. Okay, so to make this middle term equal to what I'm doing over here, I'm going to divide all three sides by by x, right? So divide this by x, divide that by x, and divide that by x. So we're going to have negative one over x, and less than or equal to sine x over x less than or equal to 1 over x. Now I'm going to proceed to take the limit as x approaches 0, I mean negative infinity of all three sides. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative 1 over x, that less than or equal to limit as x approaches negative infinity of sine x over x, uh, as less than or equal to limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x. Alright, so let's go ahead and finish this up. Um, this is going to become, this the left side is going to become negative 1 over negative infinity. It's less than or equal to, leave the, the little side alone, the middle side alone, limit as x approaches negative infinity of sine x over x. And then this one is going to be 1 over negative infinity also. So if you work this out, this is going to be 0. Negative 1 over infinity this is just 0, so you have 0. Uh, is less than or equal to limit as x approaches negative infinity of sine x over x. And this one is also one of our really small negative number um, is 0 also. Okay, so remember... Anytime you divide by infinity, we have a number, number divided by plus or minus infinity is always going to go to zero. It's always going to become zero because this gets so big that this the whole number becomes really, really small. So when the denominator gets astronomically huge, the whole number becomes astronomically small and it becomes indistinguishable from zero. So it basically becomes zero. All right. Uh, so since the limit of as x approaches negative infinity of sine x over x is between 0 and 0, the only number that's between 0 and 0 is 0, okay, because it's sandwiched between it. So it follows that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of sine x over x equals 0. So hopefully this uh, derivation helps you to understand where the, um, the sandwich theorem came about. Alright? So thanks for paying attention to this uh, clip. Uh, please subscribe to my to my page so that you can get more videos as I upload them.